Today we're going to talk about DB2 look. It's not the sexiest topic out there, but it's such a core critical piece of functionality that it has to be covered. And essentially DB2 look allows you to extract whatever DDL, whatever SQL you need from an existing database to rebuild or make an object. And that is useful in many different cases. It can be that I need to pull the DDL to mimic statistics from a production environment down into a load testing environment. It could be pulling out the SQL that you need to create a new table that you're going to promote up into QA. It could be just extracting the grant statements you need for a specific set of tables or for even the whole database to apply them in another environment for the developers to access. It can give you a ton of information that you can tear apart and put together as you see fit, almost like a set of Tinker Toys that you can use in your next environment or to rebuild your current environment in an emergency. The syntax is not difficult. The core piece is db2look-d and the database name. Anything after that is a switch to meet your needs. Now, there are some that you will see commonly operating in pairs, but it's not necessary. And I'm not going to read every piece of information here. I will say that some that you will see together are the create DB and the print DB CFG because those would be used in creating a database somewhere else. Z and T will often be used together to specify a table or a set of tables or just the schema that you need for the information that you want. Dash L is what I call the pre-work information. I may want to create a table somewhere but I don't have any information on the buffer pool or the table space or the storage group. It gets everything set up there that I need before I even get to the create table statement. You're going to see E and DP together quite a bit, although not necessarily all the time. The dash E command is going to be the create table statement that create tables, the create indexes, the aliases, the nicknames but you can add the drop statement command in there. So when you are promoting this up, let's say to QA, it will automatically drop the table that's existing to replace it with this new table. Dash M is gonna give you mimicking statistics and you can do that pretty much on every table there or a subset. The grant statements become very useful because it can show you the grant statements at the database level as well as the table level. And you can either print it out to screen, which I don't do often. Most of the time I throw it to an output command, so I have a file later. And you can log in to a remote database. This doesn't have to be done locally on the server containing the database. There are a couple different examples here and there's a ton in Knowledge Center. And as I mentioned before, you are just flip-flopping switches to meet your needs. The one that I'll point out is the one at the top. And to be honest, there's probably a better way of doing this now. It's just, this is muscle memory for me after 20 years. If I'm going to do a major upgrade or a fix pack, or I know I can do something critical that can dork up that database, I will run this to get the artifacts of everything there. I want to know all the table spaces, all the tables, all the grants, which is the L, the E, the X, and then I'm gonna send it off to a file name. I often use the dash X uh, as the second option there. If I just want to pull grants so I can manipulate who I'm granting to, I'll change out an ID or a user group and I will rerun it in another area. Um, the third is the most common for me. I need information on a specific table because I'm going to drop it and recreate it somewhere else. And the other one I'll point out here at the bottom is if you need to mimic specific statistics for a table or again you can apply it to a whole schema if you need it for every table in that schema you can use that dash m in multiple different configurations to get what you need all right let's toss the command out there and take a look at the output we'll look at the two or three main sections i'm going to use the variation of db2 look when i am just basically trying to grab everything about that database just in case I dork something up during a major change. change. So I'll use db2look-d for sample the, the database. 
dash L, I want information on the table spaces, dash, dash E for information on the tables, indexes, and the various keys, and dash X for the grants. And I'm going to go ahead and put it to a file. So I'll do it as, and we'll say sample or ridge.ddl. It's going to go out and grab everything I need. And let's take a quick look at the DDL itself. Ugh. Here we go. Because I did that dash L, uh, the first thing it's going to do is try to mimic the storage groups before it goes into the table spaces. And one thing I'll point out here is notice this piece at the top, the connect to sample. If you are going to end up using this in another database or it's a second database, you may need to go up here and alter this as you see fit. Notice I didn't use the create database switch so it's expecting the database to already exist. The first thing it's going to do is go out and get me the storage group I, groups I need and then it's going to go out there and create the table spaces I need off of the storage groups to support the tables. If I go down a little further to the create table section. It will get you everything you need. Notice this first table is pretty simplistic. It's just the create table command. We don't have anything in there about primary keys or parent child or dependencies or indexes. That happens a little further on like for example in department. It will break everything down for each table underneath this database. I did not specify a schema or a specific table, so it's getting me everything. If I go down to the very end, you're going to see the grant statements that give me access. In this case, I obviously have a group of IDs under the dev group operating system group, and I am not only giving you the grants to give them access to the specific table, but down here on the bottom, you can see I'm also giving them the information or the, the connection to the database itself. So another thing that I often do, let me get out of this. I find I have to do this a lot. Let's say I've done all my work. I really don't care about all the create statements, but I do need the grants. I need to move those grants over to another server. Many times it's really simple. It's using a grep. So I'll, I'll cat out the DDL itself and then I'll grep for grant, which will just grab what I need at the bottom and that's what I need to give this group access on another server or I'll go in there and change it from dev group to uh, I don't know lead group and run it on the next server. That's it. I'm not going to go too much into DB2 look because it depends tremendously on what you're trying to accomplish but this should give you a basic 40,000 foot view of the command and hopefully you will find it useful for you in your day-to-day -day work.